Welcome to For the Long Run, the podcast exploring the why behind what keeps runners running long, strong, and motivated. I'm your host, Jonathan Levitt. I've been running for a few years now and have the privilege of meeting many incredible runners on my travels all across the country. This podcast is intended to share those amazing conversations. I'm excited to share that I partnered with my friends over at Rugged Races to help save you some money on race registration. Rugged Race has recently acquired the Providence Marathon, which I ran in the spring and would highly recommend. They put on a ton of other races as well, including the Milwaukee Marathon and Rockfest Marathon, and quite a lot more, which you can find listed at ruggedraces.com. The code for the long run will save you 10% on registration for any of those races. Enjoy. This week's guest is Hayden Hawks. Hayden is a professional trail runner, husband, father, and coach. We recorded this episode in Lake Tahoe right before he paced his friend Matt Daniels at Western States. In this episode, we talked about what gets him really excited in life and sport, how faith plays a role in his running, his take on balance, and the strength and power that a quality race day mustache brings. We also talked about his diet and how he sharpened it to get more out of his training and to help speed recovery, as well as more about Western States and UTMB. I hope you enjoy. All right, welcome back. I am here with Hayden Hawks in Truckee, California. Uh, it is beautiful here. Um, Hayden, thanks for uh, thanks for joining today. Yeah, man, excited to be out here. Uh, never really explored this area, but uh, I've been uh, loving it so far. Awesome. Do you want to give a quick little intro as to who you are and uh, and what you do? Yeah. Uh, so my name's Hayden Hawks. I'm a professional ultra marathon runner, uh, based out of Utah. I live in southern Utah near Zion National Park. I've uh, been running professionally for about three years now, sponsored by Ultra and a couple other companies, Nathan, and uh, yeah, just uh, getting ready for my summer season. Awesome. So you are here for Broken Arrow. You're racing the 52K. Um, we were talking before about the snowpack. You think it's still going to be a fast one um, and and sort of getting acquainted with the, the trails out in Tahoe before, you know, Western States. Um, what's it like running out here, knowing all of the history in, in this area? Oh, it's amazing. Uh, I came out, uh, about a month ago for the Western States 100 training camp. Uh, I'm going to be actually pacing at Western States, be pacing my friend, Matt Daniels, um, there. And just the, I mean, the feeling that you get running on the trails here in this area is just amazing. The history. I mean, you think about all the names that have been running on these trails out here. It's, it's awesome. Um, you know, Broken Arrow, started about four years ago and it's it's just kind of made this whole week or two weeks I guess you'd say just an awesome time to be out here in this area you know you have Broken Arrow you have Western States you get everybody from Western States watching Broken Arrow and then Broken Arrow people staying for Western States after and it just brings this whole community together and it's just a, a really cool place to be when you're at this time of year. Definitely I think a lot of people compare it to the the vibe of UTMB and the 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 village in in Squaw Valley sort of has that same feel too, is is what I've heard. Yeah, I mean, I've I've never been out for it, so this is my first time. So we'll see. Uh, uh, UTMB is pretty amazing event. I mean, it's it's pretty hyped up, but uh, I'm really excited to be here. And I I've heard so many stories about how cool it is this these weekends here in uh, in Squaw Valley. Definitely. So you're a professional ultra runner. Um, you've been running for a handful of years. What got you out the door on on your first run? Ooh, um, I would say, I mean, I had a friend, uh, back in high school that, uh, he was running cross country. He, he just was a, a really good friend of mine. We would play basketball together a lot. And, uh, you know, one day he, uh, was just like, Hey man, you should come out and run cross country with me. He's like, I'll give you a ride. You know, he was a little older than me in school. And, and he, so he woke, woke me up at like five in the morning. I was like, man, this is ridiculous. Why are we waking up this early? took me out to cross country practice and it all kind of started from there. I, I was very competitive and went straight to the front, tried to push in with the, the top guys. And, and one thing that our coach did in high school that was pretty cool, I thought was he'd implement a trail running day every week where we'd go out and explore one of the, the many really cool trails in Southern Utah and St. George. And I just loved those days. You know, I fell in love with going out and running on the trails, um, you know, seeing just, like these cool uh, views and, you know, running into rattlesnake every now and then and different things like that. And it was like, man, these trails are awesome. And uh, after college, uh, after I did track and field and cross country in college, I guess that 
that love for the trails just kind of came back. And I was like, you know, I'm, I'm a little burned out of the roads and the track. And so I started gravitating more towards the trails and that, that love came back and I, I fell in love with trail running again. Cool. How'd you get into the longer distance stuff? Uh, longer distance was kind of just like uh, a last minute thing, to be honest with you. I, after college, I was like, you know, I can I can dabble in a little bit of the, the short mountain stuff. So I signed up for the U.S. Mountain Running Championships out in New Hampshire. Went out there with actually Matt Daniels. We yep. went out together, qualified for the U.S. Uh, mountain Running Team. Had an amazing time out there. Really fell in love with the trail racing atmosphere. And then I had a friend who, uh, uh, his name is Bryce Thatcher. He's actually a, a, a pretty big name in the in the trail running community, especially in Utah. He uh, he invited me to come out for some runs with him. You know, we have this mountain range in southern Utah called Pine Valley, and it's about ten thousand five hundred foot peak, and we started around six thousand feet. So it's a pretty big climb. I'd never done anything like that in my life, and he's like, "Come out and run with me." You know, we'll we'll go up to the top and then come back down. So we went up to the top, we sat up on the peak, and just had a, such a good time. You know, we're we're sitting up there and and. Uh, he started talking to me about the ultra running community, the sport, and just really, I I grew a, a huge just love for for it, and what got really excited that I wanted to kind of get into this stuff. And then he started talking about this race called Speed Goat, and I hadn't even heard about it before. Um, you know, sorry Carl, but I didn't even know <laughs> who Speed Goat was, <laughs> and uh, yeah, and then he said he was going to do the race, and uh, it was about a month from then. And, uh, yeah, I, I said, ah, there's no way, you know, no way I'm going to do an ultra marathon. Like it's too long. I'll do the short stuff, but there's no way I'm going to do that stuff. And last minute, you know, day before the race, a lot of people know this story. I, I woke up and I just felt like I needed to do the race. I called up Bryce and said, Hey Bryce, can you get me into the race? Any way you can do that? Luckily, Carl let me in. I don't know why he did. Thanks, Carl, for late letting me in because this started my whole career in ultra running. And I went up, drove up, you know, the three-hour drive up to Salt Lake City, ran that race the next morning, and ended up winning the race. And my whole career started from there. That's awesome. Did you ever think you'd be running 50Ks, 50 miles, and beyond when you, you know, when you, it, like, when you when you're running trails in high school and and college was that was it always like five ten miles cool that's it i'm i'm satisfied and fulfilled or or were you itching to sort of explore um i don't know man it, it's kind of like i would go out for these runs with my teammates in college and i'd tell them like i'd always like throw out the question like you guys want to run an ultra marathon someday <laughs> and they're like you know, heck no, like, there's no way we're going to do that, man. That's like, that's stupid. Like, why the heck would we do that? And I was like, you know, I, I kind of interested in it, you know, like maybe I'll do that someday. And, and they're like, well, yeah, you know, maybe, maybe you should do that. Cause you're kind of crazy. You know, like you, you're kind of a soul runner that always called me a soul runner because I just love to run. Yeah. I loved running miles and I love just going out and exploring and finding new paths and I mean, I came up with like 10 or 15 different routes in college because we'd always run the same routes every right. day. And I got sick of it. And I'd be like, I'd go look on a map and just try to find out all these new routes. And I'd tell my teammates all the time, oh, let's go do this. Let's go do this. And they'd be like, Hayden, let's, why don't we just run the same route that we always run? I'd be like, what's the fun <laughs> let's in Let's take that? a new adventure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's so that's why you didn't use the GPS to get over here today. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, but, uh, yeah, and then we'd always end up getting lost and end up running more miles than we were supposed to, and that was that's something that people always joke around with me is that I'm the, if, if they want to go out and do, you know, 20 miles instead of 10, go with You're Hayden. the guy. Yeah, I'm <laughs> the guy to do that. But, yeah, I, I always kind of had that uh, interest in it, but I didn't think I would do it right away. I thought it would take years. You know, I thought I'd have, like, a track career and then a marathon career and then get into it maybe when I was 50 years old or something, and... I wanted to do a hundred, like a Western States. I'd, I've heard I'd heard of Western States working at a running store, a local running store, but I didn't think it would happen this quick. But I'm so glad that it did happen this quick because I live a great life, man, yeah. and and it's 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 such an awesome community, an awesome um, place to be in my life right now. So I think part of the piece that fascinates me, and I was chatting with a friend about it yesterday, is the like. 
like re- redefining normal. So when you were in high school and college, these 10 or 20 milers, like that was long, but it was normal. And now you get to 50 miles, 100 miles and 20 miles and 50K seem normal. What is it about like pushing these limits that 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 you love and and where does that where does that come from? Have you always, you know, have you always been like that? It was, were you like that growing up? Yeah, I'd say so. Um, I was always the, the, the kid that wanted to be the best, you know, and it was like, no matter what, no, you know, if I was doing, having like a, a Lego competition with my brother to, who <laughs> could build, crush him. yeah, who could build the highest Lego or the coolest thing. Yeah. I was always the one that was like trying to build the coolest thing. And it was like, if, if I didn't do it right away, I would work on it and work on it and work on it until I, I perfected it. And, uh, that's always just kind of been in my attitude is just like to, to be the best that I possibly can. And so I think that that does transfer over to ultra, you know, like I want to win the biggest ultras in the world because those are the, the, the most, I mean, the biggest challenges to me. You know, like winning a UTMB, winning a Western States, pushing my body beyond what I even think it's it's possible of doing. It that's what gets me up in the morning. Yeah, you know. What are you thinking about on the start line of a race like that when you look around and you're surrounded by you know a bunch of fast dudes and you know it's going to be a, a tough day? Ooh, uh, I mean, I get nervous. You know, everybody gets nervous. You know, no elite is going to sit here and tell you that they don't get nervous. Yeah. Um, well, if they do tell you that, then they're lying <laughs> because everybody gets nervous. I mean, especially when you're on a big stage like UTMB. But at the same time, I instead of letting those nerves drag me down, I I use them, I reverse them and, and let them fire me up. You know, I use that positive energy and I and I go out there and I just I use it to to strengthen me in the race. And uh I think that's one thing that has made me, you know, who I am is just I can do that. You know, I have the ability to, to change that thought process from nerves to just going out there and being ready to race. Cool. And, uh, I, I actually, I, I live for that, man. I, I mean, I, I love racing. I love competing. I think competition is very healthy. You know, I'm never going to be the guy that, you know, no offense to everybody, anybody else, but I'm never going to be the guy that holds hands across the finish line. You know, <laughs> I'm going to sprint to the finish. Yeah. And if I win by one second, that's awesome. If I lose by one second, that's, that's awesome too. I mean, I love competition. I think it's very healthy for the human soul and, and the human body and human mind. I mean, I, I think it's very important to have competition and, uh, it's something that I live for. Definitely. I was at, um, North face, California a few years ago when you were racing Zach to the finish and I had never seen anything like that. I mean, the, just the redlining for the whole thing that like, how do you, how do you get your your mind and body in a place where you can push that hard for that long? What what's the it doesn't happen overnight, it doesn't happen over a season. What's been the process to to get to get Hayden to that point where he can push that hard? Yeah, uh a lot of training. I mean, a lot of training, you know. I I practice everything before I go into the race, you know, the, all the hard workouts I do all the days when I, I literally go out there just to teach myself to suffer, you know, those are all for those moments in the race when I know that I'm going to need, need to have that strength to get through hard times or, you know, to teach my body how to suffer. You know, I'll, I'll do big, a big, fast, you know, long training day and then follow it up with another day the next day or do double, you know, back to back to back workouts because I'm, I'm trying to teach my body things that I know that's going to need in the race. Um, you know, going on that lines of that race with Zach Miller, again, going off of how competition is healthy for you. I respect Zach Miller more than most runners in this, in this world. You know, he's one of my good friends and a guy that I extremely respect because of that moment, you know, because he pushed me to my limits. Mm -hmm. It then built this camaraderie where we, we are just good friends now and this mutual respect we have for one another because we know that when we race each other, none of us is going to, either one of us is going to back down. Yeah, we're going to show up and we're going to push each other to the limit. And I think that's, uh, it's a very important thing to have. Definitely. How does faith play a role in your training, racing, and and life in general? Oh, for sure. I mean, I'm I'm a man of faith. I I am. I, uh, 
I believe in God and I believe in a higher being and and uh, it's a big part of my life. You know, it's something that me and my family uh, use to find balance in our life more than anything. You know, I think uh, you can't just 100% focus on running because what if running goes bad? Right. Th- then you have nothing else in life, you know, and, and you, you get depressed and you have issues like that. Um, I I use my faith to help balance me in life. You know, it's it's something that's more important than running to me. And so... I know that if I, you know, if I keep that faith and I, and I have those beliefs and in, in that way about me, then even if things go bad, I'm, I'm fine, you know, cause, cause life's more, there's other things in life more important than running. And I use that in my racing for sure. You know, I find strength, you know, through, through my heavenly father, you know, I, I, I pray in racing. I, I think about that often and, uh, you know, me and my wife will say a prayer before and after the race, you know, thanking and, and asking for help before. And it's uh, it's something that means a lot to us, definitely. Cool. I have a friend who is fairly quick and also religious. And, um, and she says, God made me fast. It's a gift. And my gift is, and, and the way I appreciate and, and show gratitude towards that is to race really fast and to share, you know, share my my running journey with with the world i 100 percent agree you know that's exactly how i look at it yeah. too is is all these talents and abilities are gifts you know gifts from god and and, and i wouldn't be the runner i am today if it wasn't for those things and you know, i'm very thankful you know i i thank god every night before i go to bed you know for the talents and abilities that i have um and the life that i live you know i don't think none of this is possible without him how does family and balance play a role? I know you have a, a child now and, and your wife is, is active and, and has her own goals as well. Um, how do you balance family and, and supporting her and her goals as well? I know she's been, she's been crushing it lately. Yeah, she's doing well. She's, this, she's actually running Broken Arrow 52K as mm-hmm. well. This is going to be her first real mountain race, so she's really excited about it. She's been training really hard. I um, think she's ready to go. Um, Family's the most important thing to me. It really is. I mean, having a kid is like having an, another full time job, to be <laughs> honest with you. Um, but it's an awesome full time job. You know, it's a, it's a job that you love, and I'm very grateful. You know that I have those those opportunities to be a dad. Um, it's taught me so much. It's taught me a lot of responsibility. It's helped me become more mature, and it helps me find purpose not only in life but in racing because I'm doing it for more than myself. I'm doing it for more than just my wife now I'm doing it for my kid as well mm-hmm. and uh also just uh the balance with it is I mean that's pretty much our whole day <laughs> right like I wake up in the morning I go running I come back home I watch my kid while my wife goes running and then I go running again after that while she watches the kid <laughs> and then we go have a family activity we go hiking or fishing or swimming or whatever and then she and then we go to bed you know, and that's pretty much our life, but it's an awesome life and it's something we enjoy doing. Um, and luckily I have an amazing wife who supports me and, and, and she really, um, knows, you know, that this is my job and this is something that means a lot to me and she supports me a hundred percent in it. And she's just very good at, um, helping me balance it all. Definitely. What is, what does balance mean to you? Oh, balance is everything. You know, I don't, I don't think that uh, I could be a fast runner, I could be a good dad, I could be a good husband, I could, you know, be a man of faith and all those things if it wasn't for balance. You know, I, I have to balance all those things in my life and try, you know, try to be the best at all those things, but also um, realize that, you know, things are are not always going to be perfect, um, but I, that's when I can rely on other things. You know, if running's not going so perfect, I can rely on my wife and trying to be the best husband I can and being the best dad I can and you know vice versa and it's just uh i think when you find that balance in life that's when you you find real purpose and you find that everything is uh kind of goes a little bit smoother in life you know when you lean too far one way you can run into some troubles if if you're not careful definitely so one of the the things that i think people have enjoyed with this podcast is sort of the look the behind the scenes look at pro and elite athletes um so as as a pro and someone that makes their living from running 
what are some of the challenges that you have from work, you know, with sponsors or what are the, what excites you about working with sponsors? You've recently changed uh, shoes. And, and so like, what, what's it like behind the scenes working with people that essentially pay your bills um, so that you can continue to, to do what you love? Yeah. I mean, I think it's just, uh, being the best that you can be for your sponsor and realizing that they are paying your bills and that you need to be grateful Mm -hmm. for that, you know, and try to help, you know, your sponsor out as much as you possibly can. You know, I, I try to be as open as I possibly can to do things for my sponsors, you know, and, and, uh, to just be involved with them. You know, I, I'll send messages, you know, and talk to my, my athlete manager all the time, you know, not just about, you know, running and, and the sponsorship side of things, but talk to him about how his races are going or how his life has been. And, you know, I think when you build those family ties or those family relationship with sponsors, that's when it, it, it really, I don't, you really are able to build those relationships with your sponsors and also, it's just an awesome experience when, when you're doing stuff like that. Um, you know, I coach as well, you know, so I, I do have a job, I guess I, I coach about 30, 40 different athletes. And so that does take a little bit of my day up. Um, that helps me find balance again, you right. know, um, cause I, I have some responsibility with that. Um, but yeah, with, with the sponsors, luckily I have incredible sponsors that really involve me. Um, you know, currently right now with ultra, I've been testing prototypes with them. You know, I've been putting insights in about apparel and different things like that to help, you know, make the products better, you know, and that's as an athlete, I feel like I'm out there testing the products more than anybody and I need to make the best products I possibly can, not just for myself, but for everybody out there that wants to enjoy these products. And, you know, ultra has been awesome in involving me with that. Um, Unived is my nutrition sponsor and we're actually coming out with a new product in July that I actually flew out to India last fall, Mm -hmm. um, helped with product and development with this product. Um, it was, a you know, that we're coming out with a gel and a drink mix that I felt like it needed a little bit more in it, a little bit more calorie content, some other amino acids and stuff. And so I, I sent in my input and we developed a product that is just going to be an awesome um, supplement to be able to take during races. And I've been testing it out in numerous races so far at Chuckanut at my the race in China. And it's just been great. Cool. It's given me energy I need. And every sponsor, you know, I'm, I'm involved with all my sponsors, um, helping product with product development a lot and just marketing and, you know, just trying to, uh, help promote them as, as they help promote me for sure. So you mentioned um, nutrition and fueling. There are a couple of questions about diet and plant-based diet or, you know, what, what are some of the things that you've been doing lately that, that have been working for you? Uh, I, I don't eat a plant-based diet. I mean, I'm not vegan or vegetarian. Right. Um, I do eat meat. Um, I eat meat sparingly, I'd say. I'm not like a huge, you know, meat eater. I'm definitely not keto or anything. I just try to, again, <laughs> going back to the balance, I just try to balance with my diet, you yep. know. Um, I don't need a lot of sweets, you know, I try to stick away from the sweets. Um, but that being said, you know, I'll have one or two a week, you know, just to kind of give myself a little bit of a prize when I, when I get done with a hard training week or something. Um, but I try to stay healthy, you know, I try to, you know, eat as much, uh, you know, healthy meats and, and, uh, vegetables and fruits and grains as I possibly can. Um, and when I'm hungry, I eat, you know, um, I try to pay attention to my body a lot. Your body will tell you what it needs. And I feel like, you know, it, it'll tell me when it needs salt or when it needs meat or when it needs some other things. And as I have been able to do that and pay more closer attention to my body and fuel it properly, my training has been awesome. I've been able to stay healthy and everything's just been going smooth. Um, during a race, I, I do the same thing. I eat what my body tells me it needs. I mostly stick to some gels and drink mixes, um, but I'm not afraid to grab, you know, some watermelon or whatever piece of bread in an aid station if if that's what my body needs. Cool. Um, what made you reconsider UTMB and 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 what's that what's that environment like over there? My fitness, my fitness is what what made me reconsider it. You know, I had a a rough race at Trans Grand Canaria at the beginning of the year. 
Um, it wasn't a fitness thing. I was fit going into it. I, it wasn't a mental thing. It was, it was, a a salt thing. You know, mm-hmm. I realized that I didn't need as much salt in my diet, especially during a night race. And I ended up running into some hypernitremia issues and it had made me drop out of the race. But I have, uh, recently, um, decided that, uh, my fitness is just really, really good this year. Yeah. I'm very, very fit. You know, um, I've Time also, to race. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Especially mountain fit. Yeah. You know, I, I went out to the Western States training camp and I was running with a lot of really fast guys and I realized like how fit I really am. You know, some of the segments I've been crushing at home, you know, some of the workouts I've been doing, it's just been like, wow, like I've never been able to do this and have, haven't been able to recover this fast ever. And I feel like this, my body has come to a, a different level and, uh, you know, I've, I've gotten some, some blood work done from inside tracker and they've helped me, you know, balance some things out. And I've seen some things in those, in those tests that have just shown me that I'm fit. You're good. Yeah. And I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Like everything's yeah. balanced out and it's just really good right now. And it's like, why not take advantage of that? Yeah. You know, I'm healthy, I'm strong, I'm fit. Like this could be my time to go out there and, and really have a great race at UTMB and yeah. try to become that first American to win UTMB. Um, UTMB is an awesome race too. I love Europe. I love going out and racing in Europe. The vibe is just awesome. I mean, they're, they're true fans of the sport. You know, they have people out there just, they're so passionate about the sport. Yeah. Um, and it's just awesome to be there. You know, I heard Tim Tolson say it once that if he's going to row r- out and run a hundred miles, you know, in 20 hours or whatever, he wants, people cheering him right. on when he comes to the finish right, line yeah i feel the same way yeah you know I, I remember what it felt like to win ccc yeah it was just amazing yeah and i want that same experience again and and my family we're going to go out the beginning of august to actually do some training in europe beforehand because mm-hmm. we just love europe we love being out there you know we 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 love the the vibe in europe the the mountains are awesome in the alps and uh you know, it's it's my time. It's my time to go out there and, and crush a race like UTMB. That's awesome. Um, I love the approach. Um, so David Roche is who connected us initially. And, um, and one thing he said to me earlier this year is, like, we were just, we were training. It was just a long training block. And he's like, you're fit. Let's go race. And so when when that fitness comes around and you've done, you put in the work and you've, you know, you're, you're loving the, the day to day. That's when that magic happens. And it's cool to, it's so cool to hear that, you know, how you're talking about like how you feel right now. Yeah, that's exactly how I feel. I mean, the day to day is just, I, I'm loving training right now. I'm yeah. loving racing. I'm loving everything about running right now. I'm, I'm healthy. I'm completely healthy, you know, and like the last couple of years I was dealing with a lot of injuries. Um, I ran into a lot of races injured. And luckily I was able to still win some of those races, mm-hmm. but I wasn't completely healthy. And this year I'm I'm completely healthy. I feel so strong. And you never know when that's going to happen right. again, because, you know, we always run into injuries. We have issues in life and right now everything's just kind of smooth. So it's like, why not take advantage of it? For sure. So how many races do you target a year? Oh, this, this year too many, you know, I try to, I try to target specifically four races a year, yep. four key races, and then I'll put a few other races in there to kind of help prepare for those those four big ones. Mm-hmm. I try to do one, you know, early spring, one in the beginning of summer, one the end of summer, and then one in the fall. And uh, I think, especially the races that I'm doing, they're all really big races. It takes a lot mentally, physically to get prepared for a race like that. And if you do too many of them back to back to back, you just can't have the same you know, mental strength, physical strength to be able to go out and and do something consistently back to back to back. And so I try to target for, um, uh, that being said this year, it's been a little, maybe too much racing last year was too much racing. So I think I'm going to dial it down just a little bit next year. Yeah. Maybe try to focus on like five to six races total four key ones still, and then maybe one or two to get me ready for some big ones. Um, mostly just training races, you know, but yeah, it's uh, it's a little ra- too much racing this year. But like again, I said I'm healthy and things have been going well, and so I don't know. It's it's just uh, I'm excited for the summer season to start. Cool. What does recovery look like from a big race? 
Oh, so last year I started implementing something into my uh, training that's helped me recover even faster. I, I do a lot of more cycling actually mm-hmm. at the end of end of uh, the big races, and uh, the cycling has just been awesome. You know, I, I'd work a lot on the trainer in my house, um, and then just go out on the streets um, and and on the gravel roads. I have a gravel bike. And it's Riding been, must be beautiful out in Utah. Oh, it's it's beautiful, especially where we live. We have a lot of really high plateaus, um, where you can get up to nine, ten thousand oh, wow. feet, on, and they're all plateau, you know, flat dirt yeah, roads with nice views. Yeah, with nice nice views, and you can just go forever out there. Um, ride through Zion National Park, ride through Bryce Canyon National Park. It's amazing, um, and it's really helps with recovery because I'm able to get the active recovery where I'm getting the blood flow still going through my muscles. But I'm using different muscles. I'm not pounding, you know. Right. And the cycling just has really helped me recover faster. Uh, I remember this year in between Trans Grand Canaria and Chuckanut, I mostly cycled. You know, I, I did a f- some run running, but not a lot of miles. And it was a lot of cycling. And I was able to go into Chuckanut and, and win that race off of a lot of cycling. And uh, I think that's helped a lot with, with recovery. Plus just eating a lot, drinking a lot. Um, making, getting my blood tested and making sure everything's balanced and back to normal. Yeah. I think I remember when we first spoke, the, the biggest tweak you were making was just eating more period. Yeah. And it's amazing like what a change like that can, can do. And I think that so many athletes are, I don't want to say scared to eat, but, um, again, back to David, he has a line where he says, I can tell who will be in the sport for a long time based on a dinner plate. Like you can't be afraid uh, to, <laughs> to, to refuel. Um, we're asking so much of our body and, and being at a caloric deficit is you know, a recipe for um, not having success long-term. Yeah. I mean like, and I'm a skinny dude. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm like five ten, 130 pounds. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I need calories right. and, and I've, I'm, it seems like no matter how much I eat, I always stay the same. Right. And my body needs it. You know, it needs those calories. I got a test done in college once where they put a a body bug on me and they said I need five to 6,000 calories a day. Wow. And that was during like a training block when I was doing around 120 miles a week. And so, yeah, I I just try to eat and eat and eat because I know my body's going to need it. And I can tell when when I don't eat enough, my runs just don't feel as good. Do you think that, that, the recovery is, is helping or the, the, that's helping your recovery. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when you're getting in healthy proteins and healthy Mm -hmm. carbs to help replenish those stores and, and water as well. I mean, hydration is key. Um, when I don't hydrate properly, I don't recover as fast. And, uh, yeah, I, I would have to agree with David, you know, you, you need to eat and don't be afraid to eat, especially us ultra marathoners. You know, we're out there for hours and hours and hours. Our body just keeps moving. And, and not only that, but a lot of, I, I've seen this with a lot of ultra marathon runners. We have a lot of energy level outside of running. Right. And so, you know, we're not just burning calories running, but we're burning calories. Hiking and, and biking. Hiking and biking and, and just day to day living, you know, working in the garden or whatever it is. So you need calories for that stuff too. Definitely. I have a very important question here. Um, this was one that someone wrote in. How much more strength and power does the mustache give you? <laughs> very important question. Uh, it gives me power, man. Yeah. I mean, it's like Samson in the in the Bible. You know, I can't cut it. I can't shave it off because if I do, I mean, I'm uh, I'm going to lose all my power. <laughs> no, no. I, 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 I uh, grew the mustache back in college actually as a joke for my coach because my coach uh, used to have a mustache when he ran in college and he would always joke about us and say that we were kids and we couldn't grow a mustache (laughs) like him. We weren't man enough to grow a mustache. So I grew one out and he was actually like, wow, that's a pretty good mustache. (laughs) And so I decided to keep it and it's kind of just become my trademark over the years. So Nice. Uh, Matt Daniels has a question and it is, uh, who had the coolest scooter in Athens? Was it Matt, Andy, or Hayden? (laughs) definitely matt man <laughs> that's a funny story so me andy wacker and matt daniels all went out to uh to athens greece after uh mountain running championships 2016 and we rented these scooters and uh we uh the guy told us he's like oh you can't rent scooters you don't have a, a motorcycle license 
and we're like, no, 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 like, look at right there on our driver's license. Like, that means motorcycle <laughs> license. And we tried to, like, convince this dude. And he's like, I don't think so. I don't think that's right. And we're like, no, we promise. Like, that, that means we can ride these scooters. And so he ended up letting us ride them. He made us, like, sign these waivers that we didn't, like, kill our – if we kill ourselves, we, he wasn't like responsible. Fault, yeah. But he ended up uh, doing it. And me and Andy had rode scooters before. Matt Daniels never had. And and so the dude gave me and Andy like these really high or high powered scooters, <laughs> like really fast ones, and we were like cruising around. They ended up giving Matt like this little baby scooter. <laughs> like, it was this tiny thing, and Matt's like tall, right? right? He's like you know six five or something. He looked so funny. <laughs> His like legs were all sticking out on the side, and he was just like cruising around. He he couldn't keep up with us on a hill or anything. <laughs> it was just like, oh man, we were just cracking up the whole time with Matt just scooting around on his little baby scooter <laughs> that's pretty funny so he's racing western states next weekend you're crewing him you're and you're pacing right oh uh, yeah yeah both. so what what are you looking forward to about that just the experience of western states you know i never i've never actually been out to western mm-hmm. states before so this will be my first time um i've heard so many just cool stories about you know the the vibe and the atmosphere of, of western states plus i want to run it next year you know that's my goal is to to run UTMB this year and then hit Western next year. And I thought, Hey, you know why it's, it's, it's the best thing I think to come out, you know, go to the Western States training camp, get the course down, then pace Matt and crew and see what it's all about. Um, see what the heat's like. That way I know how to prepare for the race next year. You know, that's how I usually am. I like to set a race about a year to two years out that I really want to accomplish like a UTMB or Western. And I like to train for that race, you know, the year before and, and know exactly what I'm getting into. That way I can, you know, have my training all centered around that race and be ready for it hundred percent when it comes, you know, that's why last year I, I lived in Chamonix all summer so I could prepare for UTMB for this year. Right. And same thing with crewing and pacing this year. It's, it's, uh, to get ready for Western next year. Cause I want to give myself the best opportunity to win these things. And I think that's the best way to do it. Definitely. So for a race like UTMB or a race like Western States, what are some of the, the more specific training blocks or, or training runs or workouts that, that you'll incorporate? Um, not too much, actually. I, I've talked to a lot of people about this. I don't think you have to do anything extra special to get ready for these races. They're just a race. Yeah. Just it's a hundred really mile fit. race, you know, like it's just like any other race, like prepare yourself the same way you would for any other race. I think that's the issue with a lot of these races is people try to do above and beyond right. what they think they get. They try to do something specific. special. Yeah. I had a, a friend, he, he actually ended up passing away recently. He, I worked with him. He was like a 60 year old guy that worked with me at the St. George running center. And he would always say, don't be greedy, Hayden. Don't be greedy. Meaning keep your training simple. Like, just do what you're doing and stay consistent right. with it. You don't, he'd always say, you don't have to do anything above and beyond. Like you don't have to, just because you're winning a race or you're having success doesn't mean you have to like jump it up another level. Right. He said, no, it's about the consistency you do year after year after year. It's not about like having these huge highs and then lows right. and huge highs. He said, uh, just stay consistent. Don't be greedy. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm just going to keep it the same way, you know, and go into it like any other race because, I think that's why we have such a high dropout rate at some of these races is people end up burning themselves out because they overtrain or they, they try to do too much before them. Um, you know, I'll train specifically for them. You know, I'll do some heat training before Western, you know, I'll do some mountain running, of course, before UTMB and get some good vert in, but I'm just going to keep it simple. Definitely. And are you self-coached? Uh, I have a coach actually. Yeah. So I, I run my own coaching business. Mm-hmm. It's called Forza Running, F-O-R-C-A Running. And I uh, have partnered with my coach actually. We we both run the business together. And so he coaches me and yeah. And, uh, and then I coach other people and I just see that it helps me have accountability to have somebody and he can see things that I don't see. Right. You know, I kind of coach myself somewhat, you know, we, we talk a lot together and you know, I'll do some things depending on how my body's feeling and different things like that. And then he'll prescribe workouts and we kind of balance it out to where, um, we're working hand in hand together, but it's nice to have a coach. You know, I could coach myself. I have a degree in exercise science and human performance, but I just feel like I need a coach. Um, yeah. 
because it helps me not think too. For sure. What does a week of training look like for you? Um, so we, we do a lot of, um, uh, periodized training, you know, where we will work up the miles to a peak mileage and then start dropping down and, and taper for a race. Um, a lot of the races this summer, you know, Broken Arrow, Mount Marathon, Speed Goat are the races I'm doing this summer. Um, I'm training through a lot of those just because I'm focusing on UTMB right? and that's the specific one I'm going after. Um, but a week of training, I usually... I'm around over a hundred miles a week. My, my high weeks are between 130 and 150, depending on what I'm shooting for and how much vert I'm getting. You have to take into account vert because it's time on feet. Right. You know, it's not just the mileage that matters. It's if you're getting 30,000 feet of vert, that's like putting 30 extra miles right. in your week, you know, and you have to take that into and account. And you're doing all that at 7,000 feet, right? Yeah, I live at 6,000. Yeah. I can get up to 12.5, you know, so I'm, I'm getting, at, yeah, it's all at high elevation. And so, yeah, you have to kind of balance that out and see how much stress you're actually putting on your body considering all those things. And so, yeah, uh, my I, I'm a high volume guy. I, I do about two to three workouts a week. I still do specific like track workouts sometimes, you know, road workouts, because I think speed's very important. Um, I do downhill workouts and uphill workouts and it's all, you know, based on what I'm aiming for, um, in the specific race that I'm doing. How long did it take you to build up to that kind of mileage and what did, what were the jumps like? I think the reason I ask is a lot of people hear that triple digit number and they're like, Oh, that's something I want. That's something I want. But you can't just go from wanting to run a hundred miles in a week or wanting to run a lot of miles in a week to running a lot of miles in a week. So what's What's how, how many you know how many years has it taken to build up to that? How many years of consistent training has that been? Yeah, so I've been running for thirteen years now. It's taken thirteen years to build mm-hmm. up to that, you know. And that's what a lot of people think, or I think a lot of people think that with the burnout, they always talk about burnout. You right. know how like me and Jim and all these guys that are doing high mileage are going to burn out. But what they don't realize is that we've been doing right, this for, for 13 time. years. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I've been running 100 plus mile weeks for six years, you know, and it's just like it's it's been a gradual process to get to that point. And maybe a lot of guys in the past who didn't have running backgrounds and were getting into ultra marathon and right. doing 150, 200 mile weeks burned out because they'd only been doing it for two or three years. Right beforehand you know i this has taken me years and years and years to get to this point and so we know what we're doing you know when we're doing this high mileage because we've we've built our bodies in in to be able to handle it right um you know when i first started in high school i was running 30 to 50 miles a week and then in college i I gradually built up to where i was by my senior year i was running around 100 miles a week um between 100 and 120 i'd say and then throughout my pro career now, I'm going into my fourth year, you know, I've gradually built that up to 120 and now 130. And uh, yeah, like I said, it's taken me 13 years to get to that point. And people just need to be patient. You know, they need to realize that that's what it's going to take. Um, everybody, I think, in this world wants immediate results. They want immediate gratification right away. But that's not how this life works. You know, it takes time and it takes patience to get to these points. For sure. So besides the patience, what are what are some tips you'd have for, for people who are looking to make the jump in racing longer distances or, or trying something new or getting into something new um, that they may not have done before? First thing is you got to have passion for it. You know, if you go out and you just absolutely hate running long runs or you absolutely you know, you, you run a 50 mile run and you're like, I hated that. Yeah. Then you probably shouldn't do it. Right. Because, you know, why go suffer and put yourself through something that's, that you hate to do? You know, find what you love to do first. And when you, when you find what you love to do, then you'll, you'll be more passionate about it and you'll be able to train harder and you'll be able to be ready for that race. Um, the other thing I would say is just, uh, if you want to jump up in mileage or you want to jump up in, in, uh, workouts or whatever it is you might want to look into finding a coach coaches really help and you know a lot of these coaches they they have degrees in physiology and they they know exactly how to work the body into the specific way and how to um 
I guess, balance the training to where you're, uh, you're having your easy days, but you're also having hard days. And when you do get a coach, listen to the coach because he knows what he's talking <laughs> yeah. about. You know, that's why you're hired in. Right. And, uh, I think, you know, having a coach, I, I mean, I've been coached for 13 years now too, and I've had great coaches that have helped me get to this point. Um, and also just take it a little at a time, you know, um, build your mileage up, you know, if it's even five miles every week, you know, if you think about that, by the time you get to the end of the year, you're going to be double, more than double the amount of miles that right. you, that you started with. And, uh, just, you know, take your time, be patient with it, know that it will come. Um, also make sure that you throw some quality in there. It's not all about quantity all the time. Quality is very important. Definitely. What are some things you wish you knew 10, 12 years ago that you know now? Ooh. Oh, uh, probably the biggest thing was just focusing on recovery after, uh, runs, you know, I don't just run every day, you know, yeah, I go out and I, I hammer workouts and people might follow me on Strava and be like, man, this guy's crushing <laughs> stuff. And, and it's like, yeah, I am, but I'm recovering right. every single night. You know, I'm putting in one to two hours at least every night of recovery, you know, whether that be rolling my legs out, stretching, um, I have uh, rapid reboot, you know, compression boots that I do about every day or so. And, you know, I, I drink tart cherry juice at night, you know, different things yep. like that, that are just like helping me to recover. You know, I, I sleep a lot, you know, to make sure that I'm getting my sleep in so I can recover. And how many, how many hours a night are you sleeping? Last night I got 10, which was great. Almost 11 wow. actually. Um, but I'm probably average around nine, I'd say. Um, I just get, try to get to bed early, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, it's kind of easier with a kid because the kid goes to bed. So yeah. once the kid goes to bed, I can go to bed. You got a good kid then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's really good kid. But uh, yeah, I mean, and and then if I can, I try to throw in a thirty minute nap every day at least. You know, even that thirty minute nap can really help you. Um, but yeah, just focusing on recovery. You know, don't just go for a run and go and sit on your couch and watch TV all night. You know, right. like actually be proactive in recovery. And if you can do that your your runs are going to go better each and every day and the better your runs are the better your fitness is going to be i felt like 10 years ago i wasn't really focusing on recovery i would just come home from practice and sit on the couch and you know not eat healthy throw in you know a movie and just sit there and that's not active recovery right. you need to be active in your recovery cool where can we find you on uh, social media oh uh instagram uh, Twitter and Facebook, um, most active on Facebook and Instagram, I would say, um, Hawks underscore Hayden one, one, I think it is on Instagram. Follow me. Um, I usually throw out some tips there about different things as well. Um, you can also, uh, check out my coaching website, force dot com. If you want, if you're interested in any of that and, uh, yeah, um, don't be afraid to come up to me at races. I love talking to people. I love interacting with people. I love meeting new friends. Um, and I think that's a big part of our community is, is meeting people and talking to people. And, you know, uh, I'm not a very intimidating guy. <laughs> I'm pretty small. I'm, I'm a pretty happy guy. So uh, come and talk to me anytime you want. Ask me any questions you want. Hayden's always got a smile on his face. Uh -huh. Hayden, th <laughs> thanks so much for joining today and have fun. Uh, have fun this weekend. Okay. Thank you so much. Of course. That's it for today's episode. Like many long runs, it's sad when it has to end. I hope you join in next week on For the Long Run. And in the meantime, happy trails. If you've enjoyed this episode, it would mean a lot to me if you shared it so that others can find it and enjoy it too.